Okay, let's get started. In town. Here's a nice big town. Um, I do have sandbox enabled just in case we need to change some towns or need to change something or run out of money. Um, because this is more supposed to be a guideline for you and not um, a let's play. So first we have the town Mosley. If you look at the town through um, our passenger views, where is it? Residential. If you look through our land use layer, green is residential, yellow is industrial, blue is commercial. The first thing you need to know, passengers um, live in residential areas, they work in industrial areas, and they also work in commercial buildings, and they buy from each of these. In general, a person will go from residential to industrial, or from residential to commercial. They won't generally go from industrial to commercial unless there is enough, uh, enough residential close enough that they can make it to a bus station that is in an industrial area or in a commercial area. So, again, you go from residential to non-residential. That's what they want to do. Um, with that in mind, passengers are one of two types. Let's see if we can find one. Where are the people? We have Lucas Green over here. Lucas Green, you can click on all of these. You can, Lucas Green is a car owner? No, does not own a car. He has a couple destinations. He wants to go to a residential building where he lives, no move mode. He goes to a commercial building by car and the industrial building by foot. I'm not sure how this works, but they say it's by car. You can see, you can click on the commercial building. The commercial building is this one, I believe. Yeah, it's that one, see? Um, that's why he wants to walk, and he uses the car for that. Industrial building is over here. So every, makes sense, he's, I think just walking there potentially. Every citizen will have this information. You can click on them, yeah, it's great. Um, they go to a commercial and industrial building. You see that it also mentions which town they're going to. This is important. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna find one just by clicking around, but if you look at your town chart by just clicking on the town name, it has destinations. Um, in this case, line usage indicates if there's any uh, need for transport to those places. Um, but just because there is no line usage at the moment does not mean there will never be line usage. So if we look, 101 go to workplace and 116 go to shopping in Mosley, which is where we are. But there's also 38 and 23 going to Old Westry, Os Westry, which is a town just south of Mosley. Okay, you can assume that all of these are taking their cars. Um, great, that's fine. And if you want to look, at the transporting layer. 31 is somewhere in between here because that is the current demand. So there's 31 people trying to go across uh, from Mosley to Ovestry, but there's also people going from Ovestry to Mosley. So right now, this line, if there was a line, 31 would be a good demand. As you see, this line is purple, which just translates to its private, tra private transport. Once you have some lines, or once we include some lines here, there will be some public transport. Okay, let's put the first line in. Um, let's go commuter routes first, because they're more important than you might think. Um, as I said before, passengers like to either walk or go by car, but they also have a preference on how long they want to walk. Let me show you an example pick any building. I'm not going to make this pretty, I'm just going to make it functional. Um, you may see that if you place a if you place a bus stop right here, let's turn the city name off for now, you can go here and turn off the city. If you place a bus stop right there, you see that it essentially covers all of the city minus a couple buildings down here. In the beginning of the game, this is fine. You cover a lot of people, but in reality, 
the people that are up here are probably not gonna work to the bus stop down here. Same as down here, people that wanna go to these commercial buildings are not gonna go to this bus stop and uh, walk all the way down here. Um, people are picky. It's not that you're not gonna get anyone going anywhere, but it's less likely that people are gonna use your lines if the combination of walking and your bus is gonna take longer than any other mode of transport. This is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good rule of thumb. There will usually be some people that use your bus lines. So, if you place a bus like this, it's a good place if you want to do an inner city connection. So from here to the next city, there's a better chance that the bus here, driving down to the city, is faster than other modes of transport, um, especially in the earlier years. So people may be more inclined to come down to your bus. Instead, what we do want to do, I don't want to delete the city, what you do want to do, um, let's, let's get these things out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing. What you do want to do is give your passengers a lot of options to go wherever they want to go. Um, I have a, I wouldn't say develop, but I'm using a simple rule. When you place, let's see, do we have a good sample? Yeah, down here. When you place down a bus stop like this, there are the white lines which um, generally show you what the walking paths are. And you see there's, down here, there's a white line like a crossing. I'm calling these blocks. Up here is one block, down here is another block. I generally want to try to give every passenger a mode of transport within two blocks of wherever they are. How's that look? I am just placing bus stops two blocks apart. There's one block here, and this is already the next block. Where you place it on that next block is kind of up to you. I'm sure there's an optimized way to do this. Maybe the middle, maybe closer to crosswalks. But in general, just leave one piece in between and then put a bus stop there um, and keep going. So we put one there, we'll put one here, we'll put one here, we'll put one here. Now you may ask yourself, well, there's, there's a block in here, does that count? Well, I'm counting at this. There is a bus going from here to here, or there is a pathway from this block to this block, cool. There is a pathway from this block about one and a half blocks away that way, one and a half blocks away that way. So it should be fine. Um, there's other, hopefully we see other examples where this may not be the case, but right now everyone is in distance of that city. Um, we'll just continue that until we have a loop done. Looks like there's one more here. Uh, one more here. And now here you can decide, does this corner matter to you? Is it close enough to something that may develop into something or not? I'm gonna say yes, just to be complete. That's our first loop. Um, let's fill that one in. And I'll talk about another mode next. Okay. It does matter, well, while we're here, it does matter to look at the top speed and a little bit of air capacity, and if you play on hard and you actually care about the emissions, here's the emissions, so generally really very similar between the cars, and even I believe trains, it's barely ever over 80. Excuse me. Um, so top speed, 60, what does that mean? In the city, we have small city roads. So if we look at our city streets, this is our two lane medium road. Um, if you're not sure what's it, what street you have, if it's blue, that's the street you have right now. If you look at a two-lane street with a speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour. Okay. And the loading speed here is only tw uh, two. So this one seems to work the best for our situation. Now, next question. How many vehicles? That's hard to say. Um, best thing? What we should do first is set up the line. So get a line manager, new line, build the line. Everyone goes everywhere. And here's something you may or may not already do. You can do the first loop that goes one way around, 
or you can do a uh, number eight. I'll show you in a second what that will look like. I am um, actually no. Let me show you now. Sorry for jumping. Um, if you want to do a number eight, you will. You don't require this, but it's better to have a actual bus station halt. Okay, let's get this line again. Manage line and. After one, we add one here. If you want to do a number eight, which is not real number eight, it's like a folded up number eight, you would start here, go all the way around once, you come in here, and then you would go back. All the way. Throughout the whole city. At this point, you have a bus going this way, let's say clockwise, and another bus going this way, counterclockwise, that was reversed. Um, but you have one going each way, which means if you're a passenger and want to go from Manchester Road to Grange Road, you can get the most direct route that you offer, which is from, in this case, 13 to 17. Instead of, if you only offer one route, to get to Grange Road, you would have to go from 11 to 1 to 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There'll be a longer route and a detour and most likely you're gonna go slower. You can do a like a folded up number eight like I did here. The problem there is vehicles will get stuck at some point because they have to turn, because they have to wait for a train, because something else is happening. And there's a good chance vehicle gets clumped up that you will only have a couple vehicles go in one direction, just following each other instead of being spaced out where there's always a, a, a bus going um, clockwise and counterclockwise. So what I like to do instead, we don't actually need Mosley Halt, that was just for having an easier turnaround, but this is what we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The first bus always goes this way, this counterclockwise. Great, that's our line one. For line two, just the up. Now that I know that I have 10 stops, I have a better idea of how many vehicles. I don't have a hard and fast rule for this. All I know is I have 10 stops, relatively big city, I'm expecting some passengers everywhere. So what I like to do is at least one on each. For bigger cities, two on each. For bigger loops, also two on each. For big cities with big loops, I do three or four on each. Um, you can't get too many, especially if you have more than, if, if you get close to one vehicle per stop. So on 10 stops in a big city, if you have 10 vehicles on it, that's too much. You need a vehicle with more capacity then. Or thinking about upgrading to something different. In this case, we have 10 stops, four fields right, and all I'm gonna do is send two on the first line and two on the other line. Let's see them come out real quick. There they are, drive, drive, drive. They can get up to their top speed, so they should make money. If we wait just for a few seconds, we should see people already hopping in. And see where this is? It's in the residential area. That's what we want. This is also close to residential. Wonderful. There's nothing out here that gets that has people there yet, but people will start moving around everywhere. Give this a little bit of time, your stations will fill up. Great. This is the first one. Um, I would say you are welcome to try to put just one or two bus stops. If we place as few bus stops as possible to cover the whole city, which one here and one here really covers everything. And then we place our depot there. Let's make our line. In this case, you don't need a clock and counterclockwise route. You just need one. Um, and we put... It's really short. I will just put one, one vehicle on here. Let's see what happens. I'll let this run for a little while. I'm not going to say there's not going to be any people, but there's going to be barely... Okay, I was going on and on about a lot of things here, but the main thing is if, if you have two bus stops, it's hard to add more vehicles to it. Your line usage will go up because you're supplying the town, but it's never going to be as efficient and as um, practical and make money as if you actually have a rear commuter route like we have a Mosley with the red and yellow line. 
If you look at the numbers, the green line has barely any people on the line. It makes a little bit of money, but not a lot. Mostly makes a lot of money. It has more than 50% on the line. Um, commuter lines are better. If you look at Mosley, there is some room for improvement here. Namely, to get from this side of town to this side of town, the only way to go is either do a little horseshoe up here, or do a little horseshoe down here, or decide to walk across. But we are a transport industry, or a transport company. So what do we do? We give them transport. More transport is better. Um, in this case though, I want to show you that there are... I want to use trams, and I want to show you how to use trams. Trams are not necessarily the easiest thing um, to make money off, but they're really good at the things they do, and I will try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. We do not need a lane. We do want a bus lane. I just want to update to tram track. That's what I wanted. Okay, click. Get through here. Everything's a tram now. And that's why I put the depot, just so I don't have to worry about that later. Okay. Depot. Wonderful. Um, for the trams, there are effectively the same rules for to keep one block in between, that should be enough. So we have a block here. I put one, I like to put one really close to where other, uh, other stops already are, so people can actually switch between your vehicles, which they will. Um, so put one there, put one closer to the center of town. Actually, no. We put one. Um, near this road, street, because now we have a block here, there's already a station here, so people can come here to switch um, already, and then we have the end station here. If your town gets bigger, um, you can find more lines where you do this, and even on the north side, on the south side, if this is north and south, um, you can do the same thing. The one thing I will tell you for making trams actually um, profitable is try to get them up to full speed and the best way to do that is to give them a straight um, line to drive um i really don't like where i put this i want to put it closer i thought i was further away than i was that'll be good i should have picked up the the, uh, the name okay wonderful now we have a line there um trams as you know probably know, if you've played with them before, have a lot bigger capacity than your buses. We know that we have 20 capacity on our line, and it's not fully utilized. Um, it's utilized more than 50%, but not completely. So, I recommend take it easy on the trams. Find one that you like, that can drive fast enough on the streets that you have, which right now is still just 50, and pick that one. This one's the closest to 50, has 21 capacity, that's pretty good. Just take one, put on line four. Now there's a good chance that the trams are not gonna make money right away. Or it's gonna take a while for trams to actually break even because that's their nature in this game, not in real life. Um, what we got here? Line one has a lot of people waiting. But there's already one on the tram. Let's slow down the game a little bit, see who's in here. I would like to actually click on the person that's in there, but that may not work. Here's our tram. Got a lot of people. Picking up, dropping off, drop someone off. Cool. So this tram, in, the, in a way, will just serve as a commuter between this side of town and this side of town. Don't expect there to be a lot of people in either ends. Um, that's usually not how it works. But, it doesn't mean these ends are useless, and I will show you what I mean by that later. For now, um, you can assume that tram line's not going to make you a lot of money. Could you have used a bus for this? Totally. Um, you can use a smaller bus, and a smaller bus is probably at a higher chance to make you some money. Um, 
I just like to use tramps when I can, and you should use tramps if you have a straight line through town. Okay, that's commuting in, um, in cities in the town. So I hope that clears up a little bit on that end. Train line, new line, passenger train, passenger train, passenger train. Always make sure you go back um, through the same places. Um, if you have a line like this, if you don't have a circle. You've got to make sure that you click everything on one way and everything on the other way. Number two, as you may see, let's turn off our factories. As you may see, I chose to connect three tower, three stations together at once. Um, the truth is, I do this on purpose because threes is the most, it's the easiest way to be efficient and make money. Um, just because this reasoning. People that want to go from A to B, or from Mossley to Oswetry, A to B, let's go with that, um, will go from A to B, great. There's also people that want to go from A to C, makes sense, so train will be full for this way. There's also people that want to go from B to C, so on this station alone you have people from B and C going, B, A and B going to C, great. When it gets here, people from C want to go to B and to A, and then B also to A. Which means you have, on every location, you have two potential um, targets that people want to go to. Great. Now you might say, well, why don't you extend this to four, five, six, or eight? Um, the problem is that at some point you're going to have so much demand from A to B that you're almost full and then you still have demand from um, A to C, and you may not even be able to pick any more passengers up in B. That may not happen all the time, but if you connect more cities um, or more stations at the same time, then you at some point have a station A that, wants, that has people that want to go to B, C, D, E, and F. That could be a lot of people. Um, if you only have one, a, a few trains, then those trains run a chance of not picking up people from stations that they don't start at a lot. When that happens, you just have a big backlog growing and uh, transport fever two, you will lose passengers at your stations. Um, not great. If you do it with threes, then you have always just um, two targets from your starting point or from wherever you go. So A to B and C, even though there's people from A that may want to continue after C, they will change trains and go to the next station, but your train is emptied and couldn't go the other way and can pick up people again. Rules of three. Um, if you're in a circle, rules of four or more are okay, um, but generally keep it like this. There's definitely a challenge to try to make a main line that goes more than just three, and you can totally make it work, but you have to be very careful with how many um, cars you add to the train and how many trains you run on the line um, and so on. There is it's just a little finagle here. It, I, it can be totally fun but doing the rules of three is the most efficient way to be profitable at the beginning. Um, I'll just finish up this real quick. I placed a station or I placed stations with more than one line or more than one platform after the first station just because I like running more than one train on a line. You could, in the beginning, run a train and just have the middle station be the change-up or the, um, the passing track, um, but you will find generally that most of the time that's not enough. You want to have a little more flexibility. So. Once you have money and once you can actually afford it, I would say always add um, a second track to your path. And I set up this route a little silly. So manage line, St. East, when you come, Oswaldy, when you come back, you're going to want it. Wonderful. Now this line is great. Um, okay, so by quick train. Should be in here. What do we want? What's pretty? Um, I like this one. Well, I guess this is a how-to passenger. So, 
In the beginning, you should care about how many passengers you're actually going to move, which I can tell you is not going to be a lot just because you're just getting started. If you put the Alco PA on, top speed is 188, it's probably not going to reach that on the distance that we have, so it may not be the best one. But the Nohab A16 uh, is a good train, but it's a little more price, or it's a little pricey-ish. And 120 is still hard to attain, especially on that power. This one has just a little more power, so they're not that bad. This one's just 100, um, still not great. In the beginning, I would recommend you use one of the diesels. Um, they're simply more efficient. You can also try the Sapphire. It doesn't have a lot of power, which means it doesn't go up to speed very um, efficiently. You probably won't get that unless you give it a long, um, long run or downhill. But the M300, even though it looks underpowered, it's actually doing pretty well. Same with the uh, Walter Fryer or Red Arrow. I, I'm going to go with a couple doubles of the Red Arrow, throw them on the line, and let them figure it out. Now here's something important that you may or may not have thought about. People have to get to the train station. The train station, if you want, you could plunk it in the middle. Sorry, a glass of water. If you plunk the train in the middle of the city, it can totally, totally pick up a lot of people in the city, maybe even all of them. Most of the time, your city will grow and you may not have money to bulldoze your city. For example, right now it costs two million there, half a million there, you know. It's expensive, 25 million for the whole city. It's not what we're gonna do. Um, it's expensive to do the whole city or to place anything in the city. So generally, what I would recommend, place your stations on the outside of the city. One, it's better for noise. Um, it is better for traffic. But noise is really the big one. Once you have a station that's used more, your noise level will go up. Um, residential areas don't like that. Commercial and industry are not as bothered by it, but they also don't love it. But really, once you have a bus running somewhere, your noise level goes up. So I usually leave this part out. But you can totally try to make it super efficient. Some of the trams and later um, later trucks actually work really well. Here's your emissions. Actually, yeah, this is the emissions. I thought we had... Okay, I thought we had um, a noise layer, but no, it's emissions. Makes sense. Okay, at this point, I'm expecting this guy to be almost empty. There's two people there. Wow. Um, and we keep going. So, first, get people to the station. Okay, got it here. We have a tram that's actually pretty busy right now. I wouldn't be surprised if you're actually making money. Line, pretty close enough. Drop someone off. Making a little bit of money, and it's actually full. If this is actually full, that means we can think about adding another line. Cool. Oh, sorry, another tram. So what these trams now do is they pick up anyone in the city that wants to go to anywhere that the train connects to. Um, and same with anyone that comes to the station, gets picked up here, and could go anywhere in the city through our network. Let's see if this already increased our line usage a little bit. Not yet. That's a little surprising. I actually lowered it, and I wonder why. Um, nope, we're still making money. That's usually a good sign of something went wrong, but we'll just take that. Um, but just to compare, our uh, destinations here are 45%. They do fluctuate throughout the game, so don't pay a ton of attention to that. Here we are at 38%. That is a lot more surprising than I expected. However, let's see if we're making any money. Line three. Negative four cards on it, or four cars on it. So we do transport a lot of people. We're not making any money. If you remember, the other ones both were around close to 100,000. So will this work? Eh. Will it be worth it? No. 
Okay, now we have to set up another couple commuter lines, one in Oswerty and one in St. Eve's, I think that's the word. We're talking about how sometimes it's helpful to add streets to your, uh, to your city so you can actually cover the whole city with a more um, nicer route. Get your city done, um, throw, your for, throw your tracks on it, look at the destination layer. Green is good because that's public transport, blue is uh, private transport. Um, you can see the little numbers on there and that will tell you how much more traffic there is. I decided it's probably a good idea to add a new line in here uh, because there was a lot of traffic happening on there and now the numbers are shrinking. Great. Um, everything there is working. St. Eve still needs a commuter line. You always want to add commuter line if you want your train to make money. That just is a way of adding more traffic to your network. Um, making two lines here. One circle and one straight line back and forth. Um, add a couple buses and everything is great. Um, making money, everything's great. Our train's making money, wonderful. Um, here I'm talking about keep your rating for a train at least good or better. Here's another thing you need to consider. We are right now only accessing three cities. That's all that happens. St. Eve's may be connected to um, the other cities actually because there's roads, but we're not really tapping a lot. There's no people coming from any of the cities down here all the way to Oswerty or Mosley because they're not connected yet. Um, those are all people that are a potential customer for you, potential transport. So, um, what I'm trying to get at is every city that you add to the network brings more people into your network that want to use all of your network. So every time you add a new city, you increase the demand for um, more passenger capacity. Here we go. So this number will go up if I add another, another city. And this number will always go up. Let's see here, there's 17 more people that use their car instead of using the um, public transport that we provide. Is that worth putting a bus there? Maybe, but if you do that, the bus may take away some of the passengers from your train. It's not always a good thing. Oh, one other thing, one last thing maybe. Um, for passenger routes, it's okay in the city to cannibalize your routes. like. People from here could go this way or could go straight across. What's not okay is having a train going from this station to this station, but have two trains. If you have two trains, the game will try to figure out a smart way of using that route. And that may not always be what you expected, but it usually ends up with one train being pretty full and one train not being pretty full, even though there's enough capacity if passengers would be split evenly. So what I recommend, don't do duplicate lines. Sometimes it's cool to have a really big um, terminal station up here and you have a bunch of trains that all run through this town and then they split out into different regions and different cities. Totally looks cool. In this game, you're not gonna make more money that way. You would make more money for just having one train going, or one train line going between A and B and then another train line going for the next leg instead of having multiple trains going from A to B. It's just the way it is. Um, Colonel Failure calls that cannibalism um, and it kind of makes sense. Each line takes from the other line. And that's up to you. It can totally look cool. Um, I did want to check what's our line usage. 66%, 50%, 93%. All of this went up. Wonderful. Let's see what our transport is. We're transporting almost everyone in the city. Obviously you can see now there's a couple people that do something funky here, even though there are train stations. Um, a couple people that are here. Um, to me, this looks pretty good. This city will grow. It's already, what was it? It's just getting 30% just through passengers. Um, and if you look at the destinations tab, we have 588 destinations. If we add another town, this number will grow. There's 474 destinations by car, which really just means there is a few hundred 
destinations in here and a few hundred destinations in here. Um, actually, I haven't done this, so I may be called a liar after I do this, but if we connect just via road from A to B, this number, 74, 75, um, I'm expecting this number to increase gradually um, and not instantaneously, simply because I just heard recently that your connections that you have don't just switch, but new buildings that you get that may pop up in your city will use the new connections that are now available. So if we zoom in a little bit, there are houses here that are changing. You have new people moving in. Some houses may build into bigger houses. Um, all that means is every time there's a new person coming in, the new destination will be other cities. Um, and that will continue um, until the end of the game, really. Again, if we add more more connections, you will have more people using your network, and more people using your network just means more money. Um, and that's all. Um, in summary, commuter routes. Your commuter routes should make it easy for everyone to go everywhere without having to wait too long or to walk too far. So give them options. Um, inner city routes. Rule of three is most ideal because you will have a train that can pick up and drop off everywhere. Um, add more passengers to your network by adding more cities to your network is the best way to increase your profits. Um, let's see here, just want to see what our line usage is. I'm not surprised, and I am pretty certain that if I look at this line, it's still not really making money. It's maybe barely breaking even, which I would not consider a great thing. Like, we look at this compared to the other two lines, or just one of the two lines that we set up a while ago. Two line one, nobody's waiting there. 70,000, finances, always making money, never had a problem. So. Just give them options and you should be good. I believe that's all I have. Um, let me know if you liked what you saw and what you heard. Let me know if you learned something. If there's something you want covered that I haven't covered, even if it's not about passengers, please let me know. But for now, that's all I got. Um, thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye for now.